Um, I don't want random Linux users to be able to navigate around in my file system, but I do want my family to be able to. All right, because you know obviously that one's trusted. So what you have to do is create a change root jail, and change root is pretty much where you know, it, it depends on the context you're using it in. But in the context of an FTP server, it just means that they're allowed to change the working directory upwards from the directory they're initially in. On the command line, the command change root is something different altogether. Um, anyway, it's kind of a misleading. As the root user, you need to type, and if you don't know how to log in as root from the shell, type su space dash and then hit enter and you'll be prompted for your password. And then, um, anyway, I'm not going to log in as root because I don't need to. As root user, type touch and then forward slash etc forward slash vsftpd forward slash chroot change root underscore jail or you can give it dot jail or whatever the file name itself is not important um, just that you tell ftp uh, vsftp what file to use hit enter and i can't do it because i'm not logged in as root plus i already have a file but hit enter and you will create that file. That's what the touch command does. Then hit up and you will redisplay that command. And go back to where it says touch, erase that, replace that with gedit if you want to use a graphical uh, text editor or a vi if you're, from, if you're comfortable using the command line. And this is very simple. It's going to be like one line of text so you don't even need gedit. Just hit vi, then uh, hit enter. Now with VI, I'm not going to give you a whole tutorial on it, but to get into interactive mode and so where you can enter text, because right now you can't enter text, and actually you might be able to type something, but uh, anyway, alright, damn it, I don't know what I just did, alright, anyway, let's try that again. All right, to hit the letter I to tell VI to go into interactive mode. If you hit other letters before doing that, then you're giving it commands. VI operates with letters as commands. So hitting I is the command to say, hey, I want to start typing shit, let me type. And then you go into interactive mode. Anyway, in interactive mode, type the names of users that you want to be able to move around from their home directory. You want to be able to uh, enable them to go to other places in the file system. Uh, type one user per line. And keep adding their uh, every different user you want. Give each user or a uh, different uh, line. And then to, to save the file, hit escape to get out of interactive mode. So you can give it commands again. Hit colon W and then hit enter to write the file to disk and then hit colon Q to quit. And in my case I have to hit colon Q and then exclamation point to because I'm not saving the changes. That's to tell it to quit and ignore changes. Alright, so that you just added a uh, user, for example I added the user family uh, to the change root jail file and the change root jail option is actually confusing <clears throat> it's they need to change this label right here the change root jail option if you check this box it's actually acting as a not operator if this option is not selected then that change root jail file is completely ignored but if this option is selected then anybody in that change root jail is not put in change root jail. I don't, I don't know why in the hell they have it labeled the way they do. Uh, and then right here it says place only users from the list below into change root jail. Well, that's kind of, like I said, it's misleading. Anybody in the list below is not put in change root jail, meaning they can change root. All right, now hit control S to save. Huh. Oh, I didn't save it after I changed it to begin with, so... Uh, well, fuck. See, you just seen a perfect example. It doesn't always apply everything you do. It's aggravating. Hit Control s again, or go to File, Save again. Hit Control r to refresh, or go to File, Refresh. Alright, now your changes are applied. So now, going back to this directory. Okay, try to log in as the same family user. And... Oh, we didn't restart the server. I'm sorry. You gotta restart the server so I can reread the configuration file. 
And as you see now, that is not the root directory. It is the home directory, but not the root directory. We can go up and we can go into other directories. All right, now, as the other user, the one that the random Linux users that we do not want to be able to skip around on the file system. God damn it. This is their root directory. They cannot go up. And keep in mind, again, for the sake of example, I'll actually go there. Keep in mind, just because a user, you limit a directory a user can log into, you do not limit the actions that user can make in those directories with VSFTP. You, in order to limit the actions that users can perform while inside of a directory, you have to actually manually go to that directory or use the command line and change the uh, permission settings for each for the directory to be have the appropriate permission settings to limit the appropriate things. VSFTP can limit what directory users are able to log into, but it cannot limit what they can do. Keep that in mind. That's a system security issue. That is, and you know, file permissions, folder permission. That's system security and um, user groups, which is part of what they can, which kind of indicates things they can access with the appropriate group settings. Uh, that's a system administration issue, not an FTP issue. I don't think I have anything else open. So, uh, in effect, well, that, I think I pretty much said it all. So that's how you set up an FTP server and um, get everything working and secure it without disabling SE Linux. All right, that concludes this video. Uh, good luck.